It began with a sudden blaze in the dark, a streak of light so immense and brilliant that it dwarfed everything else up there. Astronomers first thought it was a mistake, a glitch in the detectors, but within hours the truth emerged. An object had been discovered nearly 100 times greater in size and brightness than 3 I Atlas, and it was heading toward the Sun on a course eerily close to Earth's own orbit, designated C-2025 or 2 and already being called the Swan. This interstellar traveler has stunned scientists and ignited speculation unlike anything else since Yumiwamiwa's rival. Its tail stretches five times the length of a full moon, a bright scar across the heavens that no one can ignore, and behind that beauty lies something far more unsettling. Every tidbit of information points to the possibility that this isn't just another comet, but something far older, far more resilient, and possibly even engineered. When the swan was first detected on September 12, 2025, it shattered expectations immediately. Typical comets appear faint, barely visible even through powerful telescopes. But this object was dazzling from the start, its presence undeniable even in amateur instruments. Within 48 hours it had been imaged in stunning detail, revealing a tail so massive that the dim filament of the 3 I atlas looked like a dying ember beside a raging wildfire. Scientists quickly realized that this was not simply a question of size, but of scale. The sheer brightness of the swan suggests a release of energy far beyond anything natural sublimation of ice and rock could explain. Instead of a chaotic spray of dust, its emissions formed a structured, precise, narrow jet, almost as though it were controlled. Its composition added to the mystery, spectral analysis revealed unusual plasma, nickel, and cobalt signatures, chemistry that is not in line with natural processes. Already there are voices in the scientific community whispering a chilling thought. This is not simply a comet. It could be a machine, one that has crossed interstellar distances to arrive at this precise moment in history. As astonishing as the swan is by itself, what makes its rival truly disturbing is the timing. Similar to when 3i Atlas approaches its own preillion, the swan races in from a completely unrelated trajectory, yet both will pass the sun within days of each other. Separated by only 50 million kilometers, a margin razor thin on the cosmic scale, for a brief period in October, both objects will vanish behind the glare of the sun, invisible to every telescope on Earth. What happens in those hidden weeks is the source of increasing anxiety. Could the two interstellar travelers interact, perhaps gravitationally, or in ways we cannot yet comprehend? Could one influence the other or even collide, showering the system with debris? The researchers at something else in Irving, that this is not coincidence at all. A choreography, two machines converging near our star is part of a mission older than humanity itself. For centuries we believed the universe was silent. However, silence may not imply absence. It may mean waiting. And perhaps the waiting is over. If 3i Atlas already alarmed scientists with its unusual nickel composition and its apparent 10 gigawatt power output, then the swan has multiplied those fears a thousandfold. Initial calculations indicate that its core is producing more than 10,000 gigawatts every second. An astonishing figure, equivalent to the total consumption of human civilization, compressed into a single interstellar object. Its plasma sheath acts like a sparkling barrier that uses solar particles to deflect, an elegance no comet has ever displayed. Periodic changes in brightness hint at bursts of controlled propulsion, pulses that resemble a plasma signature drive rather than erratic outgassing. Observers describe it not as a comet but as a leviathan, a fortress gliding through the dark, shaping its environment as it moves. If 3i Atlas was a scout, then the swan is the warship, a vessel of immense power and deliberate motion, and its trajectory brings it closer to Earth's orbital plane than anyone is comfortable admitting. Even more upsetting is the possibility that it has been here before. NASA's orbital model suggests it may not be a what-time intruder but a returning traveler caught in a loop over a period of more than 22,000 years. The last time it passed near the Sun, humanity was emerging from the Ice Age, carving monument and charting the stars. Some theorists suggest that the Great Pyramids, Gebekli Teeth, and other ancient structures aligned with Orion and other constellations may have been markers of this very cycle. Warnings carved in stone for descendants who would one day re-examine them. And now, as the swan blazes across the sky with a tail brighter than any in human history, the question resurfaces. Is this object merely natural, or is it part of a pattern humanity has forgotten but once knew? Is its return a fluke or a scheduled event written into the architecture of the cosmos? If it has come back, what is it here for this time? As October approaches, a shadow of dread hangs over the astronomical community. For weeks both the Swan and 3i Atlas will hide behind the Sun and disappear from every instrument in the universe. No human eye, no telescope, no probe will be able to track them during this blackout. 
It is as if the universe itself has drawn a curtain, leaving us blind at the very moment when two of the most mysterious objects in interstellar space ever discovered converge. When they re-emerge, their trajectories may be altered forever. Will they accelerate, decelerate, or shift into entirely new courses? Some whisper about the possibility of a miss or, even worse, a collision which could disperse fragments across the solar system, turning the skies into a storm of alien debris. Others wonder if the blackout, the story itself, is a part of it, when these objects are meant to vanish beyond our sight, conducting operations or exchanges beyond our reach. Whatever happens in those weeks, humanity will be forced to wait in silence, hoping that we are not confronted when the curtain falls with something far worse than we imagined. What separates the swan from every comet never before documented is not only its size or brightness, but its behavior. Natural comets vent unpredictably, jets erupt, bursts occur, tails bend and fray under the solar wind. But the swan's emissions are disciplined, measured, and constant as though deliberately tuned. It has a tail that does not twist chaotically but streams with surgical precision, maintaining velocity like a collimated beam. Brightness pulses at regular intervals, too exact to be dismissed as coincidence. Harvard's Avi Lobo has suggested that this could represent thrust modulation, a deliberate method of travel. And if that is true, then we are not witnessing a ball of ice and dust hurtling, wandering aimlessly in space, but a controlled object, a craft, a probe, perhaps even a vessel. Its power output, its shielding plasma, its chemical cocktail of nickel-cobalt plasma all point to processes that are not just natural physics. The swan does not look like an accident of nature. It looks like intent. Theories now swirl around the connection that exists between three atlas and the swan. Could it really be a coincidence that two interstellar objects have arrived within weeks of each other, converging on the sun almost in tandem? To some, the pattern is undeniable. Three atlas, smaller, and by contrast, the swan radiates the scale of a command ship a leviathan fortress, either to follow in its wake or retrieve information, neutralize the scout, or begin a new stage of whatever mission was set in motion long before there was human civilization. Some speculate that they may not even belong to the same origin, that they could be rival machines converging to compete for our star, its energy, or something even more profound. The sun, in this theory, is not just a backdrop but a prize, a beacon, or a gateway. And we are witnessing a convergence written into the architecture of the cosmos, unfolding right above us. As the swan approaches perihelion, its trajectory brushes terrifyingly close to Earth's orbital distance, 150 million kilometers, the very span that keeps our planet alive. For a brief moment, the swan will skim the edge of our cosmic doorstep, a shining fortress larger than any comet in history, passing as though to serve as a reminder of how fragile our world is. The coincidence has sparked ancient echoes. Comets were once seen as omens, signs of upheaval, of endings and beginnings. Now, with one object already emitting regulated power and another trailing it like a scout or rival, the omen feels heavier than ever. Humanity for the first time, is not just watching the sky but questioning whether the sky is watching back. Are we observers or participants in a drama we never asked to join? The swan's arrival forces us to face the dreadful possibility that there is no isolation in our solar system, not random, but part of a stage where larger forces act. Forces that have been moving across time and space long before we arrived to observe them. Right now, the swan is more than just a comet blazing across the heavens. It is a leviathan, a hundred times brighter and bigger than anything else we've ever followed, moving with precision and exuding power, converging with three atlas at the very heart of our solar system. The odds of such a coincidence are beyond reason. And yet here it is, two visitors from another galaxy arrive together, vanishing behind the sun and preparing to re-emerge on the other side. When they do, their paths may be forever changed, and ours may be as well. If this is natural, then we stand on the edge of one of the greatest discoveries in the history of science, living proof that the galaxy sends us messengers, wanderers carrying within them the chemistry and memory of other stars. 
But if it is not natural, if the swan is a machine, a vessel, or a fortress, then we are facing something far greater, evidence of intelligence working on time scales and energies far beyond our imagination. A scout in a fortress, a mission that spans millennia and returns again and again as humanity struggles to even record its first steps among the stars. Perhaps this is not coincidence. Perhaps it is a cycle, a test, or a warning. For thousands of years, our ancestors carved their fear into stone as they looked up at the sky, pyramids, circles, alignments with Orion, reminders that the heavens are not silent. Now it is our turn to look up and understand that the universe may not wait for us to be ready. So the question is not whether the swan is a comet or a craft. The question is what we will do when it passes, when its power brushes against our orbit, and when it finally shows us whether we are alone or part of something already far, far away. The curtain has been drawn, the actors are on stage, and humanity is no longer the only audience.